Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, May 17th, 2024, about 10.33 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.8, along with a continued earthquake swarm here into the area of the big island of Hawaii, as you can see there on the Earthquake 3D globe. As we zoom in here, we can see most of the area of interest is concentrated here around the southern region of the uh, Kilauea volcano here at the summit area, just south of the summit area. Got a decent earthquake swarm stirring up here, roughly just below the surface here, subsurface area seen about uh, anywhere from 0.9 to up to a kilometer or so below the surface about 71 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours and they are continuing to roll in here so we're looking at some amplified conditions here across the Kilauea volcano and uh, potentially seeing a magma intrusion event not only uh, maybe off of this area or potentially seeing a erupt uh, an eruptive fissure event take place there at the surface levels uh, latest informational statement here shows that the current volcano status is not erupting. This update was put out early this morning. Really no new change here. We covered this this morning. And uh, they just kind of chatted about the elevated earthquake activity, ele uh, elevated deformation data. And uh, let's go ahead and check that deformation chart right now and see what's going on here. Um, taking a pretty big drop right here, but got to remember, even though this uh, summit area and the east rift zone may show elevated inflation along with periods of deflation doesn't mean that the magma is completely disappearing down there it just means that it's moving around and that's why we're seeing that elevated earthquake activity out there take place here today uh, and in the last few hours or so uh, so far we've got uh, largest magnitude of a 3.1 about 1.8 kilometers here below the surface so things are uh, you know they're getting they're getting close, I feel. Uh, definitely seeing a broader area out here of earthquake activity here in the last 24 hours. So we'll continue to watch that area of the Big Island for some uh, potential further movement here overnight. All right, Southern California out here. If you look, if you really look at this, it's been awfully quiet out here in the last 24 hours. Uh, we'll get to the Western Pacific and this oddball earthquake out here in a second. Uh, going to cover Southern California here where we're seeing a handful of smaller quakes. One earthquake here at the Brawley seismic, seismic Zone is a 1.9. Uh, hold on a second here. I had to clear my throat a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, a couple other smaller quakes up here along the uh, northern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The San Andreas Fault sleeps for now. Uh, further out and about here, as you can see, Pacific Northwest relati relatively quiet. Uh, Texas area, Oklahoma, a handful of smaller quakes out here. Oklahoma is shaking out here. It looks like a 2.0 near Sparks, Oklahoma. Now, I believe this area has uh, some oil fields out here as well, very close nearby. And uh, there's a little odd one up here, a little earthquake near Hartley, Texas, 2.7. Let's see what we got up there as far as uh, oil fields and whatnot goes. There's a lot of farm fields. And... Um, Hard to say exactly what this is here, but where this earthquake struck a little small one, um, yeah, I don't know. Hard to say. There could be some oil fields out here, but a little 2.7 stirring up early, super early this morning here in that area of the panhandle of Texas. Uh, Puerto Rico area got uh, a little movement going on here, including a 3.3 in the last hour or so. New Jersey, way up north, 1.2. Aside from that, let's go see what's going on here across the Western Pacific. And we got a, a very strange earthquake out here. Um, well off the plate boundary. This is one of those intraplate quakes. South Indian Ocean, a 5.1. Um, let's see what we got here for the oceanic crust area. Maybe some seamounts underneath there, but... Uh, goodness, I, I can't recall the last time we've seen any earthquake activity out there. I'm going to do a quick search here. Actually, I can just check this here real quick on the historical map. See what we got. Uh, again, this is a ways away from the plate boundary. And, you know, most of the earthquake activity happens near the plates here. And this is one of those odd events out here in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean out here. So I'm going to have to watch. That could be... Uh, a sign of some uh, 
Oh, it's hard to say. Maybe some further pressure out here against the Java Trench region. We'll have to definitely keep an eye on it. It has been, if you look at the last 24 hours or so, it has been relatively quiet here in this area of the world, uh, except for these couple recent events that are stirring up in Japan, Solomon Islands, and uh, we did see a 4.4 there in the Philippines earlier this afternoon, but when I was doing the update this morning, this thing was awfully quiet. There was not a whole lot of activity out here. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, some movement up there along the Aleutian Trench as well. In the last 24 hours, we've seen a little bit of uh, adjustment going on here across this area of the plate boundary. We'll continue to watch things, see how uh, it plays out throughout the night. Down into the South Sandwich Trench here. Looks like a five-pointer coming in earlier this evening as well. A handful of smaller quakes here into the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. A couple different fracture zones here. As you can see on the oceanic crust, these are divergent zones creating some new oceanic crust over time couple fours so let's check out Iceland because obviously Iceland way up north a part of these rift zones let's see what we got and of course Iceland uh, a little area that's you know been seeing some major inflation activity out here recently 2.5 here in the last 12 hours that's a ways away from the uh, Grindvik area down here our area of interest uh, just kind of keep an eye on things here we're uh definitely well inflated across this region here and i'm just watching for some signs that would tell me where the next eruption is going to take place obviously we're almost at that breaking point here in terms of magma accumulation underneath the surface space weather activity they did issue a g class a g2 class storm i think that was just to cover uh the activity that stirred up earlier this afternoon, we've seen things kind of come up out of the blue there on the uh, KP index. They weren't really forecasting it, but as soon as they see things elevate like this, we'll throw out a, uh, a status here like the G2. This wasn't like that earlier, and it wasn't like that last night. So uh, things got elevated, and they put out their notification there for a G2 class storm, and then things went back down. So <laughs> things, uh, you know, as far as the auroras right now, not a whole lot going on there. Things have definitely dropped off. Uh, this is mainly because of a BZ component, uh, a little shock wave that was uh, felt there um, here on Earth. And the BZ component there was uh, sharply tilted south, which allowed a, a lot of solar wind stream to flow in. It wasn't a lot like like powerful solar wind, but uh, it was enough to kick up some G2 storming conditions there earlier this afternoon, mainly on the uh, area out here on this side of the world. Uh, while well, this area was lit up. So right now, completely opposite. Things have dropped out here pretty quickly. Uh, did see a long duration M flare event. Uh, it looks like we're coming back up here now for a uh, little bit of, a little bit, another flaring coming in. But that M flare coming off of the uh, far side, or at least the southeastern sunspot here that I've been keeping an eye on the last couple of days. That's, that's going to be 3685. <clears throat> it does look like there's a little secondary sunspot here associated with this so a little companion sunspot uh, either way this region definitely needs watch pretty closely it is looking quite dynamic uh, almost a super complex sunspot here and uh, this area you know very capable of producing some x flares uh, the threat has dropped over the last couple days here but i think uh, we got a decent shot of seeing an x flare here soon uh, as noted here there was that long duration m flare event uh, earlier from that same sunspot does look like we're seeing uh and yeah, it looks like a little sea flare activity right now uh, but aside from that uh, overall threat right now 99 percent chance for sea flare m flare at 35 x flare around 10 percent or so i think there's i think there's a little bit higher probability of that uh, from that uh, sunspot 3685 there um so we'll watch that uh see how things prevail there on the sun but for now, uh, let's see what else we got. Anything major going on? Let me check the globe out here and see what else may be happening. South uh, looks like towards the South Africa area, 3.0. New Zealand down here across New Zealand did see a three-pointer. South Island, uh, a pretty decent quake up here along the Kermadec Trench. 
fairly deep as well. This was a 5.8 earlier this afternoon into the Kermadec Trench. It's subduction zone here. And um, got to watch for some subsequent activity downstream into New, Ze uh, New Zealand following this activity. Uh, let me bring up the GeoNet servers here real quick. I don't need a... Let's see here. Hold on a second. There we go. I, I guess I could have clicked on this one. It's been a long day. I've spent most of the day out in the sun. So I'm a little bit sunburnt. Uh, let's see. All magnitudes here. 1.9, 2.2. Couple other smaller quakes out there. 3.1 here, South Island, about two hours ago. You know, eventually this area definitely is uh, expected to move pretty significantly. It's, uh, you know, I suppose like any other areas, uh, a matter of time. There's that 5.8 occurring up along the Kermadec Trench that did show up quite nicely here across the majority of the seismograph stations earlier even in south island area picked up that 5.8 uh, so aside from that really nothing since then but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this area uh, as things seem to be adjusting uh, across this region here recently and uh, definitely in hawaii this is kind of standing out to me with all this uh, quake activity right now I want to go over to uh, the uh, seismograph stations here and double check this, see what's going on. Here's the last, goodness, yeah, look at the last 12 hours. Things have really ramped up here, more so in the last six hours or so, getting uh, quite a bit of cluttering going on. So we'll watch this overnight. You know, a lot. any volcano that shows any type of significant swarming like this needs to be watched pretty closely. We've been... You know, looking at the Kilauea volcano going up and down in terms of inflation here recently. So we're, I think we're at a, a pretty decent point now where we could see eruptive activity take place or potentially another large displacement here of magma uh, from the summit area off to the southwest rift zone and maybe, who knows, even off to the uh, eastern rift zone. So we'll have to watch that, see how things play out. Severe weather threat, a little bit of thunderstorm activity out here through the night. 5% chance for tornado activity around the uh, Georgia, Florida line out there. Aside from that, you know, just kind of going to be a little noisy out there with the uh, thunderstorms kicking up. All right, I'm out of here. Um, seismograph station's pretty quiet. There's a little spike on Yellowstone. Let me see here. Let me double check that, see what's going on here for Yellowstone. Some wind events earlier. That's that thick, uh, dark blue line here on the graph indicating some wind. But aside from that, really not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up. And if you look at the uh, trimmer map out here tonight, things are awfully quiet as well in terms of the trimmer count for the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. So not a whole lot happening out there in that area for now. Have a good night. Friday night, right? Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Take care, folks.